morning, good afternoon, wherever you are. Uh, welcome to Women at the Frontline here on Civic Space TV. We want to thank you so much for taking your time to view us out, to check us out. And here our simple message is women spreading out in every sector, women being in every sector and in every place in society because their value is visible, their value and impact in society is visible and very important. And our purpose, of course, as usual, is to bring you different women impacting society at different levels in different sectors. And to share her story today, I have my namesake, Monica Niraguhawa. The name is beautiful, it means God-given. And uh, she's going to share her work in terms of uh, the empowerment of the girl child in this country, Uganda. And I know that uh, a lot of things are happening. It's not just her work alone, many other uh, partnerships and organizations in that work. In my time, when I was younger and trying to do much more advocacy, there were very few interventions around that area supporting the girl child. So we are going to hear a lot of what is happening around girl child empowerment in Uganda. And of course, the impact we are making in that area. So Monica, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much. It sounds relieving and of course to hear a, a namesake. Monica, when I was growing up, was a very <laughs> rare, rare name. <laughs> You'd be, it, it would be hard to, to hear from another person called Monica, but now many, quite a number. And what I have noted, the name is very powerful. <laughs> it is owned by great women. Need. In great women. And of course, I learned that in the Catholic faith, Monica is the mother of a great apostle, exactly. St. Augustine. Exactly. Is that where we derive this power, perhaps? Yes. I mean... The name is prophetic. It is prophetic. It's <laughs> one that believes in achieving what you pray for or uh -huh. what you're called to do. Okay. Yes. It's about calling and purpose. Yes, indeed. It I, is. Yeah. I could yes. agree with you on that because mm. in what I do as well, it's really around purpose and calling. Mm. And I feel really happy talking to women who are leaders like yourself mm -hmm. and I'm highly privileged to to be talking to you thank you for giving us your time and I uh, would just like as usual to chat around your life journey your life you know your work and the impact you are creating in society because we are making a case <laughs> for why we must have more women you know people think now women have got it all they have achieved everything and uh, therefore we now must reverse and focus on the men mm. and uh, that's the conversation we have on this space mm. but uh, before we go the other side we just like to trace your journey mm. and your life purpose and calling yes. this far this yes. far from when you were, you came in or checked into this <laughs> world <laughs> all right so yeah. thank you so much honorable monica for mm. hosting me again yeah. um just reflecting on my journey, um, uh, I was born here in Kampala. Mm. Uh, my parents worked for prison service, so really they were serving government in that space. Okay. And uh, that's where they met, mm. and uh, here I was. Mm -hmm. uh, my dad originates from Kisoro district. Um, wow, all the way. All the way, <laughs> and my mom originates from Teso. Ah, so I'm, my I, place. I'm, I'm a hybrid of what? some sort. Where about in Teso? <laughs> in Bukedia. Ah, just next to from. us there. Exactly. Wow. And uh, mm. growing up in the barracks, mm. I grew up more in a in a military space. Before you go there, I think there is a lot of intermarriages in Teso and, uh, and the western region. Mm. Really, I believe quite a number <laughs> in every family there is an intermarriage so it's beautiful maybe we are yeah. the ones who launched it because we are quite <laughs> older and intermarriages were not the thing or back that in time. that day yeah but it's nice it's yes. beautiful yes yeah. so yeah. raised in mm. the prisons barracks because my parents of course worked there and i went to school to makshon bay primary school right, right here in, in the in barracks mm. so i'm really a kid that has grown up seeing uniforms mm -hmm. the army mm -hmm. Whatever comes with the barracks. But order. Order Discipline. for sure. Discipline. Organization. Management. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good place to grow in. I know, but yeah. tough as well. No, it's also like mm. the hospitals, like where I grew up from. Mm -hmm. Those guys, they, they follow systems. I know. It's know. about time. Yeah. It's about order. Yeah. So that's me. Yeah. And then, of course, after primary school, I went to St. Henry's Girls School ah, in Buyege. Okay. So I was literally nurtured and raised by Catholic nuns. Mm. And I'm a very spiritual 
person. A young woman. Wow. Very spiritual who believes even my purpose is a divine one. But also one. just to mm. note, as you mm. make mention of the Catholic uh, faith, there mm. is a way they raise uh, children. So much. If you went to those Catholic grounded this schools, plane is my key. friend, you... Yes. Yeah. yeah. Mm. I think everyone, or oh, everyone takes their children to Catholic schools because of that. That discipline like the values, mm. the morals. Mm. I mean, those are things that I was taught years back and they live with me, Up which I really recognize yeah. and appreciate. Yeah. So I was raised by Catholic nuns. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. And where a nun is. I know. <laughs> I almost became one. You have to iron your, your uniform in a certain way. You know, you have to sit in a certain yes. way. Yes. That's why I asked if I was seated. Well, well, because <laughs> that's how we are raised. And, um, after you know, being in this Catholic environment for six years, I went to Macquarie University mm. and pursued a bachelor's degree in adult and community education. Wow. And of course, that time, people didn't understand adult Up and community today, education. We sure. don't understand that. Really? Course. Really? So but I'm an mm. example of what it is. A, so, a fine example. A I fine say. example. Yeah. Yeah. So for me, adult and community education was a defining course for me. Mm -hmm. And it really helped me get rooted to my real calling, understanding that <laughs> communities is the way to go. Mm. Communities is the way we can really transform, do a difference. Mm. So immediately after mm. my graduation, yeah. I got a job at MIMPRO, mm -hmm. Mentoring and Empowerment Program for Young Women. The, the, course, the course of community and adult education, yes. you see now they, they, they discourage young people mm -hmm. from doing such, they call them plain courses. I'm battling in my house with uh, those who are going for university now mm. and we're having a conversation around mm. courses. So I don't know if there is anything uh, that you can tell young people. Is, is it about the course you do or is it about what you intend to do in life? Because Ordinarily, they would tell you that course you did is a plain course. You can't succeed in life. What would you do? What kind of job then would you do? What employment? Those kind of things. What, what is your thought around that? So my thoughts, mm. having gone through different radars of education, whatever course you partake, mm. it, those courses are a foundation that usher you to the world. Mm -hmm. So beyond the course, there are skills that you need. Absolutely. So you can't just say, I went and trained as a medical doctor, it's enough. It's enough. I went so and trained sure. as a lawyer, it's yeah, enough. Of success. They may look fancy, mm -hmm. but the reality is to succeed in this space, education, your course is a foundation. Right. And I believe that all courses are created, they have that foundation bit that help you get to the world mm. when you get to the world you have the opportunity now to define what you want to do mm -hmm. but for you to be able to define what you have want to do there are those skills and trainings that you should have that build you yes sharpen your skills that's why i believe that um leadership mm. is critical for everyone mm. at every stage. Mm. There are skills you learn in leadership that you'll never learn in a classroom. Mm. Yet you need those social skills mm. to be able to enhance them together with the, you know, the foundations or the fundamentals you learn from school, mm -hmm. team them up together and succeed. Right. Yes. Right. Yes. That's a very important point mm. right it there. Is. And it I is. think uh, coming from where you're coming from, where you are taking us in terms of MEMPRO, Yes. That's where you learn those skills and the importance of mentorship. Yes. Yes. Now yes. you're telling us about your first work. Yeah. In terms yes. of tracing so your journey. So my first work in terms of tracing my journey was at MEMPRO, mm. where I worked as a program manager right out of university. Wow. And for me, it was a very good uh, space mm. for my mentorship, for my support. And, and growth, like I, and growth mm. again. Mm. But like I said, that even back in school, I was always a leader. Wow. I was always a prefect. Or something. Something. Yeah. You know, an apple doesn't fall so far away from the tree. Oh, right. So mm. sometimes when you tell parents, allow your children to belong to different clubs. Different clubs. And they're like, you just have to read and pass. Uh -huh. I have a problem uh -huh. with that. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Because uh -huh. I believe that my leadership in Maction Bay, uh -huh. my leadership throughout St. Henry's Girls School, yes. Viege, mm. I should admit to university. That's why I was competitive for this job. Wow. So we should let children belong to these different groups. Wow. What you learn, whether it's about confidence building, mm -hmm. 
whether it's about having that self-esteem and confidence, mm, mm. that's what you need mm, mm, in this world. Mm, mm. Sometimes, no matter how intelligent you are, if you can't communicate effectively, effectively, mm. that's one step away from achieving your goal. Yet you're actually intelligent. Very intelligent. So these Very social fair. skills mm. should be nurtured right from kindergarten. Ground zero. Yeah, <laughs> kindergarten. <laughs> Get her got it. I mean, you'll find yes. a child in kindergarten mm. who is very articulate. Mm -hmm. Then a girl in university and wondering, what happened? What, what went, went wrong? wrong? Somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> but I think by beginning to appreciate and recognize that social skills should part of, be part so, of the equation. what then should parents do in that transition? Mm. You know we are busy. Mm. We are busy parents. All you care is to look for the money, take them to school, and then hope that the best will work out there in a school environment. Mm. Are there other things we need to really, really bring out the best in our in our children as we nurture the girl child in, in this discussion we are having? Yes. Yeah. As, I think yeah. no matter how busy you are mm -hmm. as a parent, create some time for your children. Mm-hmm. And I believe that the time you create when they are younger, mm. before they are even 13, ah. are the most precious times that your children will remember about you. That's very important. I'm very busy, mm. but I have time for my son. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's just automated that I need to check in. Mm -hmm. I love to take my son to school by mm. myself. By yourself. So that in the morning we are having actually conversations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love to pick him up from school. Mm -hmm. So that we're having conversations. Yes. So I can check in how was your day. And just spending the weekend with him and others that I stay with. So for me, I believe that we have a role to play. We have a Teachers role Teachers will play. play their role, mm. but we need to be in the conversation. We need to observe our children. Mm. No matter how busy you are, please schedule it in. Mm. Just like you schedule for an appointment. But uh, I'm trying to pick your mind yes. because you are an expert in mentorship and that uh, area. Because mm. it, it's supposing you have lost some step in parenting along there. Because mm. what we are doing here is natural leadership, inspire leadership. Yes. How can we grow? excellent leaders who yes. are women yes and so if i missed a step along the way as they were growing mm. are there other foundational programs activities that i can take advantage of in that youthful stage to ensure exactly. that we refine these individuals yes mm. as a parent even if you missed a stage you work backwards mm -hmm. as a parent to mm. play your role mm. because you may identify them a group where they could be mentored mm. But mentorship is a full circle. Right. They'll be mentored by that group, yes. Mm. But there are things about that mentorship process that the parent has to be a part to of. work with or okay. to be a part of. Okay. So you find that you circle back in. Wow. So and also for parents, allow your children to belong to all these clubs. When we were growing up, we had girl guides, mm -hmm. we had scouts, mm -hmm. we had what uh, used to be Rotary, have? Rotaract. It was actually uh, called uh, Interact. Interact. Yes. I, was I, I could not afford that one. <laughs> <laughs> I was part of it as well. Yes. Yeah. But you can see that those clubs in schools mold. Wow. They mold leaders. Mm. It's not a joke. Mm. Only that they do it in a very fun and interactive way. Yeah. But that's why we saw the seeds mm -hmm. of community. Mm. That's why we saw the seeds of give back. That's why we saw the seeds of sacrifice. Wow. I mean, that's why we saw the seeds of love. Wow. You know, mm. that beyond yourself, you're able to serve other people around you. Mm. Because so, then a mm. complete leader like Monica mm. here, it doesn't come from the blue. No. Fall from the sky. The whole village oh, yeah. has contributed to my mm. mentorship and support mm. right mm. from the time I went to school. When you think about leadership and mentorship in that sense, you find that so many people, have been in this circle to make sure that you get to where you have to get to. That's wonderful. Yes. That's wonderful. Mm. And quite comforting for me who is still parenting and <laughs> hoping the best out of my children, mm. hoping that they become greater than I am. Mm. Those kind of questions yes. come and I'm sure that any other parent that is watching will be interested mm. really in what you are talking about. And I would I want to capture the best because you are mentoring children. <laughs> <laughs> I want to pick out the best from mm. you, yes. of course.
And uh, so you are telling us about your journey now in and in Mempro because yes. you are just stressing your journey and picking what is important <laughs> out of it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I worked with Mempro for six years. Yeah. And for me, it was really a great ground mm -hmm. as a young graduate, um, being able to, you know, to cultivate all these skills that I had, but having a space to be able to practice them, mm. to make the mistakes mm. that everyone makes mm. and growing through those and becoming a better, better manager, yeah. better leader. Mm. And so I served for six years before I decided to to start Gallup Initiative Uganda. Wow. So yeah. right now you are at Gallup. How long have you been there? I've been there for seven years. Okay. But the idea of Gallup began 10 years ago. And ten. so we shall be celebrating 10 this December. Wow. That's yes. a big one. Yes. Okay. Yes. So the idea was there, just like they say Uganda is one of the most entrepreneurial countries in the world. <laughs> Very right? entrepreneurial, but the businesses don't survive or any social enterprise hardly survive to their first birthday. Really? So when you celebrate one year in existence, then you are really, you thank You're doing God. Well. You're doing well. Yes. So for me... For 10 years, for you, it's great. Yes. Yeah. The idea started mm. even as I was in Mempro. Mm. As Mempro, we focus mainly on youth mm -hmm. and more of the seniors. Mm -hmm. But as a girl that grew up in the barracks, Later on in the slums of Luzira, Kampala, Kampala, <laughs> in the center of slums. Yes. I always had this urge and calling to make a difference. Mm -hmm. I grew up negotiating for my space all as the a time. Girl. Mm. I grew up as a second class. What do you mean negotiating for your space? Negotiating that mm. things didn't come automatically because you were a child. Mm -hmm. If you were school, you have to wait a little bit a little bit later mm. if it was about books mm -hmm. you first go we shall get the we books we shall get the books like i always came second okay however i believe just like nelson mandela say that education is such a powerful tool for transformation absolutely if mm. it wasn't for education mm. honestly mm. It will be a done deal. Mm, mm, mm. So I always knew as a child that I'm not as useful. I'm not as I'm not a Great. priority. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And I even remember that one time I didn't have shoes at school. <laughs> so I didn't qualify to be elected as a leader that year. Can you imagine? Of course, when you're not smart. You know, I was smart, the, but I did The guidelines were, I think, probably to have a shoe <laughs> on and a nice uniform. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so I always felt that there was a miss. Mm. So having gone through all these different challenges. life and growing up. And graduated off school mm -hmm. and began to understand work. I said it's important for me to go and pursue my dream. And also which make is a empowering girl. Yes, oh, exactly. Oh. For me, it's about my purpose. Mm -hmm. And calling. In this world and calling. Okay. I just felt that, you know what? I want to work with adolescents. Mm -hmm. Because I just imagine my young self mm. and say that when I was probably nine, mm -hmm. 10, 11, I was just in my own bubble. Mm -hmm. Trying to figure out life. Yeah. Trying to guess. Mm -hmm. And sometimes adolescence sets in and you're there confused. is some kind of excitement there, <laughs> but also some kind of frustration along the journey. And when I recall and remember that when I was in secondary school, I'd return to my Islam community. And most of the girls I went with to primary school were pregnant and having children. Dropped out of school. So I just reflected on that memory lane and said, you know what? Mm -hmm. I need to pick this up and that you know is Kept the reason you. why i really had to go and do gallop work wow so before we go deeper into gallop work i yes. just want to know in terms of coverage yes. how are you scattered are you in my district <laughs> <laughs> so that i can jump up and say well mm. kum is covered my girls there are covered. Um, mm. so in terms of coverage in this last 10 years we've really absorbed ourselves in Kampala, uh -huh. in all corners of oh, Kampala. Okay. And this year, we're able to scale up to mm. Bukedia district. Wow. Yes. 
in terms of going out of Kampala now? Yes, so Bukedia is the first step mm -hmm. that we took on. We believe that um, there is so much work to be done in Eastern Uganda. I can be sure of that. And I would yes. love to take you to my own district, to my own little schools there. Time will you come know. when we shall step into that uh, as I am well. so anxious that I have not done quite a lot in terms of reaching out to the girl child at my lowest level mm -hmm. because I've been working at national level. Yeah. So I feel like... I really need to do something small, small for my daughters mm. at the district level, mm. where I mm. come from, my mm. village, mm. my district, you know, things like that. Yeah. Okay, so we'll uh, go get back to what you're doing right now in terms of Gallup. Yeah. But I just wanted to pick your thought around this question of, um, you see, we are now talking of the future being female. <laughs> the future <laughs> is female. The future is female. Yes. And this question keeps popping up all the time and we just want to pick your thought as a, a leader in this area why we feel that is important why would we really be talking about that yeah just so mm. for me the future is female because i'm the future yeah yes okay it starts with me it starts with you yes and i'm female there is no way i can say otherwise mm -hmm. that's for starters i would like to know more about that <laughs> <laughs> from that point of view, from your point of view, yes, a whole different perspective. The future is really female, yeah. Because if I reflect on my own journey, yeah, and the fact that here I am mm -hmm. leading change in communities, mm -hmm. that's the future we want to see, where women, where girls grow up, mm -hmm. irrespective of their challenges, yes, and are able to start changing their stories through service through service changing stories of harassment mm -hmm. of violence mm -hmm. of discrimination mm. into a story of can we work together can we support each other mm -hmm. can we have more girls mm. go to school mm. can we support more girls to return to school much as they got pregnant yes. during the pandemic mm. you understand mm -hmm. so the future is female if you just step back and look at how many people are really doing community-driven work, like real groundwork? Majority are women. Majority are women. Yes. Wow. And I think it just comes naturally mm -hmm. because we love to nurture. Mm, 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 mm. We love to connect. Mm -hmm. People say women love to gossip. No, we don't actually gossip. We, we share. Actually, we're actually building communities as we <laughs> share our challenges and finding solutions. Healing one another. I know. People call it gossip. No, no it's, it's gossip. not. It, it's, it's actually mental health. Exactly. It's the month of September and we are talking about more issues of mental health exactly. as well. Exactly. Sharing think and opening up. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Engage more in mental mm. healing in those spaces. Yeah. So that discussion is very, very important mm. because then now... There is a section of the public that thinks that we no longer need more women in these spaces and uh, we have achieved it all. Empowerment has worked only for women. And so we have left the boy child. I don't know what your thought is because this is, you are the center of this kind of work. <laughs> yeah. We've not left out the boy child. Mm -hmm. However, we shouldn't forget that the pandemic actually gave us another example yeah. that if you look, everyone struggled, mm -hmm. both the boys and, and the girls girl. struggled. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But when you start looking at the percentages mm -hmm. and the effects mm -hmm. that girls are carrying like a multiple burden, mm -hmm. for example, yes, adolescents dropped out of school, both girls and boys. Mm. But there were more adolescents who dropped out of school and now they are young mothers. Already. That's a double burden. That's a double burden. We do not, I do not uh, disqualify the fact that boys equally need support. But I'm coming from a school of thought that as Gala, for example, I can't do everything. Mm. Other players mm. have to come into the space mm. to support, mm. you know. But for me, it's about recognizing that what has that pandemic taught us? That there is still need, need. for this work to continue. continue. However, I also, we also, also acknowledge that boys have to be brought into the conversation. Right. But intentionally, mm -hmm. not just. Mm -hmm. They should be brought into the conversation 
in a manner that supports the girls and the boys to thrive together mm. but not in a manner that again disempowers the girls the girls remember what we are trying to undo has been here for generations yes we have tried to undo it in very few years we could yes. call it maybe 100 or 200 years mm. since the 1900s 2000 when this movement you know started yeah. very early mm. 1900s there yeah. in the other countries mm. but here in uganda of course we cannot count more than 100 years in terms of women empowerment and uh -huh. so what we are trying to undo is historical and yes. we couldn't have achieved it in a short time yeah yeah and of course that's a very very important uh, discussion mm. and for me here I keep pointing out the figures the statistics mm. we've only been able to bridge the gap in uh, education mm -hmm. a little mm -hmm. we are also closely bridging the gap in access to health services it is also being bridged although there's a lot of gaps in sexual and reproductive health issues and all that mm. there is a bigger gap in politics women and politics and leadership although mm. people seem to think that we have reached parity mm. in that area mm -hmm. we've only been able to achieve less than 30 percent in terms of you know the gender gap yes. in uganda also across the world so yeah. this conversation i believe is important mm. as you are mm. saying mm -hmm. and uh, of course that's why we commend you and others mm. who are actually grounded in terms of bringing this girl child yeah. from ground o or one yeah to where they are mm. right now, to where we are mm. as a, a advanced leader. So I would like you to just talk a little bit more on, on the work that you do as a as Girl Up Initiative. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. the work at Girl Up Initiative Uganda is work that we do with love. Ah. Yes. You ah. mean, I mean, the, the field is tough. It is. Community work is tough. Mm. If you do not have love and passion for it, you You'll follow. You follow. Mm. But if we've been in this space for 10 years, it really wow. shows that we are grounded on love and on the fact that uh, communities are in charge of their own change. Right. Yes. Uh -huh. Like we, we, we can't start thinking from the top. Mm -hmm. We need to start to think from the grassroots. Mm. There's so mm. much power mm. working from the grassroots. Working from the grassroots. Yes. How do you do that? So how we do that is that all our our programs are community centered. Mm -hmm. We work with primary schools in those communities. Mm. We work with um, with so we work with schools where we engage adolescents, boys. Again, we engage them intentionally because as Gallup Initiative Uganda, we want to ensure that school environments are safe for are girls safe. to thrive. Number one. Number one. Mm. So you realize that. It can't be safe if the other actors are not part of the conversation. Ah. So that's how we engage the boys. That's how we engage the teachers. That's how we engage the parents wow. and the school management. Wow. Just to ensure that the, the whole school ecosystem understands the issues but works together. Wow. So that's what we do. And of course, when we started our work, it was just girls. Mm. But then we realized that if we don't engage a component of the boys, if we don't engage the component of the teachers and school authorities, we are just talking to ourselves. I saw parents also when and I was parents as opinion. well yeah. and parents as well mm. because each one of us has a critical role to play. If this girl is to thrive from that ground mm. zero mm. up to parliament, for mm. example, mm. you understand. Mm. So working with this holistic group is what we do in schools. However, we also recognize that there are so many youth out of school. And so we have programs that are, that are customized to support youth, especially in the areas of sexual reproductive health and mm. rights, and in the area of gender-based violence prevention for young people. Spreading because in terms of, of access to information, access to services, understanding the issues of violence, and how can they be part of the solution to addressing, you know, violence in homes in communities that wow. they they live in so do you have like a curriculum you take them through what are those activities you know yes. the nitty-gritty yes. yes so we definitely have a curriculum for both programs mm. and for primary schools we we do our program based on the psa model ah which is already a government thing yes yeah. and mm. i think government has so many useful tools okay but i think sometimes the challenges is that 
when funding for a particular tool Expire. expires, ah. sometimes we don't go back to embrace those tools and continue so working with them. So it is dusted and kept away in the shelf. For most of them. So for us, our programs are built into the PRC model. Which makes your work easier. So easy. Yeah. So yeah. easy. But beyond just talking to girls, boys in this space, parents, we also embrace a lot of uh, hands-on skills training. Uh -huh. Because we believe that economic empowerment mm, mm. is very critical mm, mm. if we had solved some of our challenges. Right. right. Economic empowerment is a cross-cutter. It's a cross-cutter. So you'll see that in the schools, beyond teaching girls social skills, we also teach them hands-on skills. And for me, my passion for hands-on skills was when we went to school back in the days, we used to have Fridays designated for art and craft. Uh-huh. Making things. We would mold creating. things out of clay. Uh-huh. But right now, all we think about is grades. And cram work. And cram work, copy and paste. I mean, they, they, there's a problem When there. I was younger, mm. doing those things, I didn't quite appreciate them. I because know. then they were forcing everyone to do it. And we are differently gifted. Hmm. So for me, you give me art to do, I would never understand. <laughs> yeah, I love the fact <laughs> that we used to yeah. come out and sit like mm. outside mm -hmm. and then play around with the clay, you know. Mm. And for me, what makes sense right now was that taught me creativity. Mm. That taught me that, yes, it's okay to... You use know, your hands. To use your hands. Mm. It's okay and to think. study, mm. but while tapping into the talents that you have as a human oh. being, people survive with their talents and we should nurture that right from and the And after onset. all, they cannot be discovered until you try to do it. Exactly. Yeah. For someone to become a tailor, probably the grandmother taught her how to knit. And you're like, how did you get interest in tailoring? Mm. There's always a story. But there's a problem right there because mm. you see our society mm. has not appreciated that we develop our skill and make a living out of it and mm. make a business out of it. Mm. We seem to be pushing our kids in the academics, excel in the grades, and then work for somebody else. Looking back, we made so mis many mistakes, I think, when mm. in our generation growing up, we didn't focus on that God-given talent and creative talent that you have to be able to make a living out of that. Exactly. Yeah. I know that everyone has a talent. Mm. Mm. But mm. sometimes you can even double that talent, just mm -hmm. as the scriptures say. Mm. So I believe that it's our role as educators, as teachers, mm. to support initiatives that support our children to tap into those talents yes. and callings. Yes. There is nothing wrong with pursuing your academic journey. Please do it. Mm -hmm. But beyond pursuing your academic journey, mm -hmm. what else can you do? What else can you do? As an employer right now, mm. If I received someone's CV and all they had was academics. Good grades. I have a problem with that. Okay. I want to see that probably in your senior six work, probably you were a pump attendant somewhere. Ah. Yes. Wow. Because it teaches you humility and service. Okay. Probably you volunteered somewhere. You worked at a restaurant somewhere. Thank you. Ah. I will not expect the big places because they don't also offer opportunities okay. for young people anyways so those small small things are important they are very important mm. i want to see that you are part of this group mm -hmm. i want to see probably that uh, probably you are you are a church leader or thank someone. you yeah. some kind of leadership some kind of mm. give back mm -hmm. that teaches me that beyond academics oh, which yeah. is great oh, yeah. Yeah. You also have a spirit of service and voluntary. Those things count wow. if you have to work with communities. That's a whole new perspective. Mm. And I know you are saying these things because you encounter a lot of a young lot. people. <laughs> <laughs> and those are the things that you tell them. And yes. I think we could do a lot more of you. Mm. Kind of people, coaches, life coaches. But as you are saying, it should start from ground zero. Yes. Because at some point, then we have lost these children already. Mm -hmm. Because you're trying to straighten a, you know, a child. You know, broken the, child. A broken child. Mm -hmm. Training up from ground zero is very important. Yes, it is. I love your thoughts. And uh, I think that uh, we need to hear more of this conversation. Mm -hmm. Especially as we train leaders, as mm -hmm. we train our young people. Yeah, so uh, I, I, I thought that uh, we could capture a little bit also of what your impact. Are you satisfied with uh, the work that you do? Are you seeing change in the girls, 
because that's your target, mm. but also in society, in mm. the communities that you're working. Mm. What are some of those, you know, things that make you smile when you see the work that you've done? Yeah. I think one of the, the biggest impacts, I'll start with myself. Ah, oh, yes. Again. Again. Uh -huh. Because for whatever you, you give out to the world, okay. you can test it with yourself. Right. Yes. So just looking right. at the impact, mm -hmm. the fact that I co-created this idea mm, mm, mm. 10 years down the road, mm, mm, mm. this idea is becoming more and more relevant. More and more relevant. And I you can know? attest to that. Exactly. Mm. That's one of my biggest impacts. Wow. That you're able to start mm -hmm. and stay on course mm -hmm. irrespective of the challenges. Of the challenges. I forgot to tell you earlier that after Makerere, mm. I got a Commonwealth scholarship and went to London. Ah, we didn't talk about those <laughs> hey. the awards that you have got. Yes. Yes. Share, share. You know, you know. we don't like sharing about those things. I know sometimes we get taken over with the conversation. But anyways, <laughs> yeah. Going to London, embracing that life. It's a good life. Mm. It's mm. a very efficient, but it's a good life. <laughs> it opens you up. It opens you up to the world. Mm -hmm. I could have chosen to stay. There. There. You were there for how long? Two years on a scholarship? One year. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I could have chosen to stay mm -hmm. and say, you know what? Mm. Why should I go back to that dusty Kampala? I know, mm -hmm. to the slum. Mm. But when you know that your, this is your calling mm. and this is your purpose for life, mm -hmm. those things don't matter. What matters is... The change you're making. In the community. Yes. You coming back and saying that I've acquired this knowledge. Mm -hmm. How do I integrate it to my own work? How do I integrate it to keep the organization running? So one of my biggest impacts is the fact that we've survived these 10 years. Wow. And the more we survive, we've become more attractive. Mm -hmm. People now listen to us. People look for us. Yeah. In the beginning, people didn't look for people us. People come to you. People come to us and say, you know what? <laughs> Can you speak on this? What the Can you write nations will come to you? I know. Yeah. Can you write a concept on this? Mm -hmm. Can we pick your thoughts on this? Yes. That's grace. I'm enjoying your discussion. That's your grace. Thoughts. That's are impact. very powerful. Yes. It means that you've touched the hearts of communities. Wow. People feel connected. Mm -hmm. Beyond the numbers that we have, mm. people feel connected to what you're doing and saying. Yes, you make sense. Mm. What you're doing speaks for itself. And indeed, what we do at Gallup as Team Gallup, mm -hmm. I'm just I'm just the executive director. Yeah. But there's a team of 30 amazing Ugandans. 30 people. Yes. That's a big organization. Yes, it because is. Because I know of an average of organizations <laughs> have just seven to ten maximum about there. Community work big. is hectic. That's big. And sometimes mm. you do not want to have staff who get burnt out mm. and don't do what they're supposed to do. Yeah. So it's important to put the human resources there. Wow. To You're do managing the work. a very big team. And, and they're I, all young people. I can see at your age. <laughs> <laughs> that is impactful. Yes. I'd like to capture some of your lessons as a leader, which mm. you can share in mm. terms of leading teams and all that. But I'm still on the issue of your impact because mm. you can only know yourself as a leader mm. by that hunger, that desire to change society. Mm. Because leaders don't just exist. You are supposed to, you know, impact a certain life. Yeah. That's what leadership is all about. Solving problems, solutions. So yes. from the time we've mm. started, mm. we've impacted over 100,000 adolescents and youth in wow. our programs. Wow. I didn't even talk about the economic empowerment program we have for out of school youth. Wow. So we have a, a fashion and design school. What? Yes. So I'm dressed smartly. So I was yes. looking at that jacket. I yes. said, this is creative. Wow. Yes. I'm dressed by Missouri Design Hub. No, no, no. Hub. Advertise. We're on Maz program Missouri here. Design yeah. Hub is our social enterprise. Mm -hmm. That make that trains out of school girls, wow. but also we do production that we sell to sustain the work that we do. I could be your client, again. That is really. impact. Yeah, that is because impact. oftentimes you ask organizations what's what your is your impact sustainability uh -huh. plan beyond the grants. They call it exit strategy. What is it? I sustainability, don't know. sustainability plan. Yes, <laughs> the NGO. All right. right. Mm -hmm. 
And for us, Mazuri Designs Hub is mm -hmm. because you're able to create products that mm -hmm. you can sell in the local market, mm -hmm. but also in the global space. Unbelievable. Yes. And that work is done by those young people. Yes. This is like a high profile design. Yes. It can go on those I high, you know. Normally, yeah. I'm normally dressed by them, by Missouri Designs Hub. How do we find them? Are they online? Yes, Missouri Designs Hub is online, mm. but our workshop is right in our in the community of Butabi Kachirombe, where our offices are. Mm. That's where the workshop is as well. Ah, this is good work, I yes. can tell you, I, yes. and I would like to be a part of it. <laughs> when it's it comes sure. to fashion as well, I would yes. like to contribute to yes. that and, and be a part of the clientele. Mm. And of course, our viewer, if, mm. if they're impressed, because personally, yes. I think, that's very good work. If it is done by your trainees, then they yes, are stars. Yes, and our programs are free. Oh. And I know that parents have been struggling with girls mm -hmm. who didn't return to school. What they can do with them. This year, majority of our trainees mm. are between the ages of 13 to 19. Unlike the previous years where we had older youth, mm -hmm. we have younger girls yes. enrolled. It's really a, a reflection of the fact that so many girls didn't return to school. Wow. But again, we're able to offer that option. Training. Yes. And preparing them for life. Yes. They become designers. Yes. Cloth makers. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And now we, we are also assessed by the Directorate of Industrial Training. Wow. So, mm. I mean, when you train, you know that you have a national certificate mm -hmm. in fashion and design. It's great work, I think. Yeah, it because is. Because every one of us has to dress up. Of and you have to buy a cloth it's like to put food. On. Yeah, it's like <laughs> food. You can't walk out of your house without no, a cloth. You can't go for many yeah. days without food. So feeding. we need to make our young people understand the yeah. variety of these you yes. know, callings in life. And the variety mm. and, and the and the beauty of skilling. Aha. Uh -huh. Social empowerment and skilling mm. is really critical for mm. us to grow. Mm. Yes. Mm. Yeah. This is great work, mm. I can tell you. Of course, yeah. I really, But of course in yeah. terms of impact, mm. the numbers are there. The fact that we started with just one employee. We have 30 amazing people. Ugandans. Ugandans. And Gallup is a space that gives fresh graduates opportunities Opportunity and trains with and them. Trains because them. I know not everyone gives them that opportunity. Wow. So it's been like a training ground for mm. so many that they've grown. And then, as the entity grows, they, they grow, with, grow it. with it. So when someone comes to you and says she's the head of programs, and you're like, this is young. This is young. Yeah. That's our culture. We start with them young and grow with them. Wow. Yes. Wow. Monica, yes. you're doing great work. I can hear. you. I, I, you. I, my heartbeat is just like dancing. Yes. And yes. I'm like, and also that the other impact is looking at the fact that with COVID, mm -hmm. we're able to return at least 300 girls back to school. Mm. And for Eastern Uganda, where we scaled, we're able to return 100 girls mm -hmm. who got pregnant mm. back to school. Mm. Some are expecting, mm -hmm. some are breastfeeding. Mm. Mm. But for us, taking them back to school means taking care of those needs mm -hmm. that support them to go to school. Wow. Because up countries, fees, school is free. For example, you just pay for development fee, yeah. but ensuring that maybe the mother has a meal mm -hmm. because she's breastfeeding, mm -hmm. taking care of those small, small, needs. small needs that would support her to return to, to school. finish her school. Yes. Wow. We are able to, to address the needs as they come in as their they unique come form. In. So you have 100 right now in school in that Eastern you're Uganda. directly paying for. Yes, and 300 in Kampala. Wow. Yes. That is life-changing. Yes, it and is. And I'm sure who, someone who could be watching would be wondering how to get to you and say, okay, the, could we perhaps invite girl child, you know, girl up in this school to facilitate a meeting, to facilitate a camp, you know, you know, those one of you do those mm. one of supports to individual schools and also other, you know, organizations. Normally for schools we love to cultivate relationships. Okay. Because one offs do not yield results that we are looking for. Mm. Yes. Mm -hmm. we, we love to cultivate a relationship with the school. But then as we work in these schools, we work for a period of time. Of time. Yes. Like how long? At least five years. Ah, investment in a school. That's a long time. Yes, change takes time. Ah. We are dealing with things that we 
you know, that, yes, it, that have lived with us for generations. So you can't just go for a one-off and think. And then move out. Yeah. There could be that girl who needs to speak to the counselor. Mm, but mm. you've gone away. So what you happens to her? To transform that school, the yes, culture, the systems, yes, and the community, and yes, the parents, and yes. everyone. And, then... and that's why we are not spread thin. Wow. However, if uh, a lead of a non-profit reached out asking, how can I do this? Mm. Absolutely. We support them. We support them. Mm. We have big entities that have reached out to, to us and said, you're so strong on menstrual health management. Mm -hmm. Can you come and train schools in Karamoja, for example, where we've gone? We shall put up our team to go and do that. Mm. You understand? Mm. And they will facilitate the team to be able to do that in their organizations. But when it comes to schools and communities, we love to build more long-lasting relationships with them and work with them long term. Wow. Yeah. But that will take us longer in terms of spreading out. It will take us longer, yeah. but the theory is touch one girl, she'll transform that village. Is that so? Yes. She'll transform the she'll village. She'll transform the village. Do it right. Do it right. She'll transform that village. She'll transform the yes. village. Don't just do things and, 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 and jump. And, Oh, and band, count band. numbers, uh, and yet your impact is not solid. Wow. If it's about scaling, can we scale deep? Just like we began working with girls and realized that we need to bring boys into the equation, we need to bring parents, we need to bring local leaders, we need to bring religious leaders. You're working with the same girls, but broadening mm. the other people mm. that make decisions for her. How do you make sure wow. that those girls can actually engage with them and more recently we have a project that supports girls to participate in in spaces where decisions are being made so we lobby with parliament with ministries to make sure that can the voices of girls be heard into those spaces this is very so it's really more mm. intentional and deep mm -hmm. and long term very intentional because indeed. we believe one just one mm. can I transform love that, that one. village touch one girl and touch many Yes, I can I reflect on my own life and you know other people yourself. Yes. If you touch one girl, so many others you touch yes, exactly. around exactly. in the community and yeah. in the country. Yes. Ah, so mm. you've given us justification to keep going in this program <laughs> because we are asking for more women to spread out, more yes. girls to spread out. Mm. We are encouraging women to come out. You know, yes. go out and dominate society. Yes. And lead. Yes, offer and leadership, lead. And offer lead. solutions, mm. provide yeah. change and impact. Exactly. This is what all, you know, this space is all about. Yeah. And uh, we have been enriched so, so much with your story and your life, the impact you're causing, mm. very impactful life. Mm. But uh, before we go, I just thought I could also pick a little bit of your values, mm. you know, <laughs> that keep you glowing and going as a leader. <laughs> Some of your lessons, this yes. is a space of inspire, you know, inspiration yeah. for, for, for leaders, future yeah. leaders and all that. So, so we are so, mentoring yes, indirectly, yes, so feel free yes. to share. So some of my values of or yeah. what I really feel is very critical for any leader, one is time. Time management. Yes. You were here so early. Yes, <laughs> time, time is time. Time is time. I can't work with anyone who can't keep time. Why is time time? You know, because the time you lose can never be regained. Yet so much could have been done. Done in that so time. So as a leader, mm -hmm. if you say seven, please keep your word. Seven should be seven. Yes. And as you do it as a leader, your team will do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't talk about African time. No. No, time there is, is no African, there is no African time. time. It applies to everyone. Yes, time is time. Mm. I also think the other for me mm. is just having faith in God. Wow. And I'm not afraid to afraid talk, to talk about, about God. God. <laughs> All right. On a, you know, a program like this one, of course. I'm not. Very that, important. I really believe that my calling is a divine calling. Mm -hmm. uh, so my spirituality is one thing that I really honor, mm -hmm. that I believe that it it's has a calling. pushed you Yes, yeah, it really called me. Mm. And the other is around integrity. See, sometimes when you talk like that, it doesn't go deeper to mm. the one who is listening. Why is it important mm. to have faith? Because then it works for you alone. But I try to encourage me also to have that faith <laughs> in God. Why? For a leader like okay. yourself. Faith is important mm. because as you do this work of communities, yeah. times will reach when... You even do not know where the next funding is coming from. You see? If you do not have faith mm. and hope mm. in that perspective, mm. you could be taken up by pressure. Mm -hmm. 
how you could give up. Mm -hmm. But before you give up, you think of how many girls are depending on me, are depending on this institution <laughs> to survive. So you have to keep but pushing. But when you have faith, yeah. you're like, good. This is something that you showed me to do. It's can you offer many people, answers? Yeah, I mean, yeah. can you provide? Can you provide? Yeah. I have 30 young people working for those are 30 families 30 families to with, support you know mm -hmm. and all these communities mm. so for my faith keeps me grounded it keeps me hopeful it keeps me believing balanced exactly so for you me don't become pressurized uh, for small small things there is nothing mm. about me without god wow yeah that's great monica yeah. that's powerful and that being said mm. we welcome everyone irrespective of your faith your faith yeah yes but faith is such a strong thing that spirituality. I think spirituality mm. that we should all have. Mm. Mm. Yeah. It's and then integrity. Integrity. When I can see integrity on you. I the know. moment I just see you like this, <laughs> I see integrity. When yeah. When partners mm -hmm. trust you with their resources, please deliver. Mm. Deliver. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Once you deliver, you'll be trusted with more. Ah. That's how we have grown. Wow. People ask us. How come integrity mm. funders invest? Are you putting their investment to into good, good use. use? Into good use. Into good use. Mm -hmm. And it goes to all of us in the different sectors. Wow. If someone comes to support you, mm. you are the, the ally, like you're the person who interfaces this person. Are you playing your role? Wow. Are you preaching? Wow. I mean, are you doing what you preach? Integrity is critical in this work. Mm. Because without integrity, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in five years you won't survive. You can't survive. You can't survive. You can't survive. So integrity is really very important for leaders. And it's the simple things, by it's the way. the simple things that matter. Yes, the simple, it's the simple things, things that matter. Yeah. Okay, we are winding up, Mona, and uh, <laughs> I would like to... I, I, I'm finding it difficult to bring your discussion to a close because it's so... It touches deep, mm. you know, being the girl that I am. I know. <laughs> the things you are talking about are so relevant. And yes. the girls that we want to see in us, yes. the multiplication of leaders, because yes. it's been said that uh, if you don't multiply other leaders like yourself, then you have not succeeded exactly. in your leadership. Exactly. And so the hunger that we have to see other women come out, other young leaders mm. come out of us, mm is what keeps us going every other day, waking up and, you know, and I'm sure that is what your life is all about. Yeah. And I want to thank you so much for being here. Unless you have uh, any other thought that I could have left out uh, as we wind up, uh, uh, what, what else? Uh, perhaps, yes, in terms of um, things that are out there, what keeps you going, what inspires you to keep waking up every other day. In other words, what are those things which are undone, which are yet to be done, which we must really all collectively work towards as we I bring think, it to a close? Yes. Mm. So what keeps me awake <clears throat> mm -hmm. every day yeah. is the fact that so many girls didn't return to school this last two years. Yes. Mm. So collectively as a country, yeah. are we offering options? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are we offering support to enable those who completely can't afford to return to school? Yeah. Or are we going to sit back and say it happened? It, it happened. happened. It affected every part it, of the everyone world. Everyone suffered. But everyone suffered. Yes, but mm. we are saying that girls are the leaders. Girls are the future. We're just going to sit back and and watch child mothers, you know. Or are we saying, what can we do to take them back to school? Mm. That keeps me awake. Mm. Yes. Wow. You have done me well, my sister. <laughs> I want to thank you so much. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that uh, this uh, particular chat we've had with you mm -hmm. will inspire one or two many people because our, our hope is that when somebody comes across it, can pick one or two things to yeah. keep going, to mm -hmm. push, yeah. to be encouraged. Yeah. There could be someone thinking of starting a social enterprise in that direction. Mm -hmm. They know where to go. Yeah. You are out there to help, uh, to support them. So I want to thank you. Our dear viewer, thank you for being here up to now and uh, we greatly appreciate and we continue to be inspired because of you to bring more and to have more of these conversations uh, in, in this space. So thank you so much until we meet with you on the next uh, program. Shalom. <laughs>